Okay, so in the last video, we uh, started a Sapper starter project and we added some dummy content or dummy pages, etc., to it. But that's obviously not what you want to do with your single page applications. Real, in, in reality, you have a database in your single page application, you have forms, you have, you store content, you upload content, you download, you retrieve content, uh, etc. So, so let's do things that, are, that a real world SPA uh, single page application would do. Uh, so the first thing to do is add, you know, persistent storage, uh, which is, add um, MongoDB or some other database. So let's do that. Um, all right, so first thing we will do is add the MongoDB driver, right? So we say yarn add MongoDB, okay? So once you do that, you will have MongoDB driver in your project. So let's, and, and now uh, in order to connect to MongoDB, we will create a utility uh, file um, module. Let's do that. So under um, SRC, there is node modules that was created by Sapper, but you can use that to create your own little library. So under node modules, we'll create a new folder called at sign lib so this is our own library for our own project this is sort of a local module and we create a new file in there let's call it mongo.js okay so in mongo.js we will import now we could import mongo from mongodb uh, but unfortunately MongoDB, the current version of MongoDB driver has some issues, so we have to instead instead use the old style imp import, which is const mongo equal to require MongoDB. So this is the common JS way of importing a module, and that's what we have to use. Keep in mind, this is Node.js code. This runs on the server, not on in the browser. So let's uh, create um, a function, export a function that will initialize our connection to MongoDB. So um, we want to, uh, to return uh, the client to MongoDB client, right? So in, uh, we can just say uh, from the init, we are going to return the client okay but the problem is client doesn't exist so we have to create the client let's create a variable called client equal to null and then return it but before we return it if there is no client which means client is null if, if it is null then initialize it and that would be uh, we can basically call from this package from the mongo package we call mongo dot mongo client dot connect and connect to what well let's for now just say connect to mongodb colon slash slash local host now in reality your mongodb could be in some other place but we will handle that a bit later okay and then you can assign that to client and that should be it but unfortunately literally that's not it uh, this is an asynchronous request, so you would have to run, the, this would return a, a promise, so you have to put a wait in front of it. But you are not allowed to put a wait unless this function is asynchronous. So that's why you make this is an asynchronous function. Now, you can do this. Now, one more thing is you need to select a database. Um, otherwise, it will connect to the default test database. So let's uh, say that and let's initialize the database and say client.db and give it a name. Let's say Mongo, no, no, not Mongo, uh, Sapper Starter. Now, of course, feel free to change this 
in your own case. In reality, you should be having a config file which will set the default URI of MongoDB as well as the default database. Uh, so that we can do later on. So now that we have these two things, let's create a variable called, oops, this should be called client, and let's create another one called DB. And return client and DB as an object. So that is what init will do. Init will look at the client. If it is already connected, great. It will just return it along with the DB. But if it is not connected, then it will initialize the client connected and it will also initialize DB. So let's save this. And now we can use this uh, in our code. So let's go into routes blog. And you see how posts is the hard coded version of the uh, of the posts we will replace these with real um, data from a database so we go into this slug.json.js this is the um, restful api that is serving the hard coded versions so let's import let's import I mean basically we can just say import init from lib slash mongo okay and we can get rid of post because we are no longer uh, using hard coded posts and in, uh, in our get we will fetch so let's fetch it now uh, we first say const db is equal to um, await mongo uh, await init. So this is the init function that we got from the mongo module. We are calling it and because it is an asynchronous function we are awaiting on it. But of course when something is when you are calling await you have to make your own function async. So that's what we are doing. We made our get function async. Now we can say db.collection. Now we can choose whatever name of collection. So we will call it posts. So create a post uh, collection. And then from there you find as in fetch all the, um, not sorry, not all, only one, find one where the slug value is equal to slug. So, but of course you don't have to do that. You can simply shorten it by saying slug. And then whatever we, we receive, we assign that to a post. But of course this won't work unless you put a wait in front of it. Right, so now we have a post. And from that point, if the post exists, if post, then you have a 200 and you return json.stringify the post. So you convert that post, which is a JavaScript object, you turn that into a JSON string. Otherwise, of course, the not found is always there. So let's save this. Now, let's save them all. The thing is, we do have to, um, we do have to restart the whole server because we added a whole new um, dependency. But before we do that, we also have to handle this index. Index was, again, using posts. We no longer use that. We are using MongoDB, so got rid of that. And we don't have to do this contents thing. We simply say, again, get is going to be async. We have to make it async and we do the same things that we did here which is initialize and fetch from the database so we initialize and now we are going to get an array of posts so posts plural await db dot get collect in collection posts and instead of find one we are finding all and there is no criterion and finally we do have to convert that to array because what we are getting is 
a collection or a cursor so we convert that into array uh, it's important that you don't forget a weight in front of it then finally when we are ready to return the response we say json dot stringify and then it posts which will come back as an array okay so let's uh, hope this works save it and I am going to restart the dev server this is sort of important okay now that we have done that uh, our recent post disappeared why because we don't have any posts remember we are no longer fetching this hard-coded list of posts we are actually fetching it from the MongoDB so uh, is it working at all let's find out if I go to blog.json I'm getting an empty array so maybe it is working it could be working okay so let's see if this actually works by inserting something into MongoDB so here's what where we, where we go so run MongoDB client which is Mongo and then connect to the correct database which is sapper starter right and then say show collections there are no collections right now so we can create a collection we can say db dot posts dot insert and then we insert one object in it which is the post and it will have a title of let's say test one and then slug of test dash one and a the HTML body which uh, we could put anything but we'll say paragraph this is body and let's uh, close that and let's uh, just to check that HTML is working we will make this strong as in bold okay and let's close this object and insert all right and inserted one now if you see collections there is a post collection and if I now reload this blog.json wow look uh, we have a post and if we go to the blog page and reload there is the test one if I click on it this is body this is working amazing so this was uh, very quick well, I think very simple all we had to do was create a lib folder at lib in node modules create mongo.js uh, which connects to it and gives us a database uh, connection and then we go to slug.json and index.json and .js and uh, we connect we either in slug.json we fetch a single uh, item while in index we fetch all of the items and return that as an array so we could just to test that this is really working we could insert a second test and this time we give it a different slug hopefully maybe test 2 and the title is test 2 and maybe in the body we could in the body let's uh, this time put a an unordered list so ul li1 close li li2 close li and close ul all right that does that look like correct HTML it does so let's insert and now when I go back to my blog I have two test one and test two and test two has a body of unordered list while test one has a paragraph with a bold body strong so that is uh, pretty good I think um, that shows us how to add a MongoDB to our sapper start project in the next one we will uh, actually create this Svelte UI to insert these posts so that we don't have to insert them by hand by executing these MongoDB commands. See you in the next video.